Welcome back, folks. It's some more Gabriel Knight. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? I need you to look up a Madame Casanou. Madame Casanou? Is she related to the murders the same way your friend, Malia Getty, was? Grace, Casanou's at least 70. As if that makes a difference to you. Okay, I'll see what I can find. Anything else? I can't think of anything. Okay. It's time to close shop. So it is. Have a nice night. You too. See you tomorrow. And thus ends day two. Wait, am I gonna have that same stupid fucking dream again? Oh, shit. There's like ten days of this. No! Fire is big. Oh, it burns! Oh, I feel bad for you. Oh, it burns! Holy shit! The snake pits, dragon! Oh, it's a fucking golden cross with a lion and a serpent! Oh, shit! But oh, there's a dagger now with electricity that turns into a snake! Ooh! And it's back to the office on Bourbon Street. And there's a snake wrapping around my throat. That doesn't feel good. And I am hanging from a fucking tree again. Day three. Come to Bacchus's abode. I saw the What the fuck? I was reading the poem, asshole! But Bacchus, the Greek god of wine and happiness and... Drinking beer like I'm, I'm doing. I'm so glad you could join us today. I've got messages when you want them. I don't know what the poem said, asshole. Mm -hmm. I also checked out Casanu. There are multiple listings in the white pages. I got the page, but you'll have to figure out the right one. Right, thanks. Oh, I gotta figure out shit. yesterday with Mal Getty, or is it just too embarrassing? I hit it. Mm. Don't tell me you actually got to see her. By the star at tonight. Gabriel, you don't seriously think she's interested. She could have any man in the city. You know, men with bank accounts. You underestimate the Nyeth family's tragic poet samurai appeal. When Daddy married Mom, she was the hottest catch in town. Hmm. Huh. I always suspected there was something fishy in your family tree. But seriously, I think you should be careful. Wow, <laughs> Grace. I'm serious. I don't know why, but I have a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach about this. It's called jealousy, my dear. And you're right. You should be jealous of Malia Getty, as should every woman on this planet. I just... I, oh, never mind. I'll just fix these books. Your life is in your own slippery little hands. The point is to get it into somebody else's hands. And soon... Boom shakalaka. Gabe is my type of guy. Times pick of you. Dated June 20. 1993. Gabriel scans over an uninteresting front page. Under the cultural events section, there's a notice about a lecture on African religions. The lecture is at Tulane University. Gabriel's horoscope for the day. An evil eye is upon you. Change course before it's too late. I know. Right? Jesus. Fucking negative. Alrighty then. Let's see here. Let's talk to our girlfriend. I mean, our uh, 
Go work. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you have messages for me? Your pal mostly called. He left a message that they're interrogating a suspect this morning and you might want to be there. Sounds fun. Mm-hmm. I bet. Do you have more messages for me? That man from Germany called again, Wolfgang Ritter. Now he's claiming to be a relative of yours. I took down his number. If you change your mind and want to give him a call back, just ask me for it. Can I get that phone number for Wolfgang Ritter? Sure. I'll give it to you when we're done talking. Here's that phone number. Thanks. If Wolfgang Ritter's phone number, written in Grace's pretty scrawl. The number written on the note is 4909 Hello? Hello. I'm calling from the Dixieland Drugstore. We have an order for you. <laughs> Castro, be quiet. Who is this? I'm a friend of the owner. I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. Cajun Critters Animal Clinic, this is Melissa. Do you have a Madame Cazonou as a client? Madame Cazonou? Sure, I know her. She's not here right now, though. Really? Hmm. She told me she'd be there. Uh, would you happen to have an address by any chance? Uh, yes. But I'm not sure I should give it out. Who are you again? I'm worried about Castro. He's missed three dance lessons. Castro? Her little doggy? Oh, he's so sweet. Well, I guess if you know Castro, it's okay. Uh, her address is 345 Dauphine. Thanks. And now let's call Wolfgangy. With his ridiculously long fucking phone number. Guten Tag, Sie haben Schloss Ritter erreicht? I'm looking for Wolfgang Ritter. Ja, einen Moment. Ja, ist es Gabriel on the phone? This is Gabriel Knight. Why are you calling me, Mr. Ritter? I have been having premonitions of great danger for you, Gabriel. You must leave New Orleans this very day. What the hell are you talking about? It is hard to explain on the phone. I have had senses, uh, feelings about you. It took me a long time to have you tracked down. I had a sense that Heinz had a grandson, but until this dream started, I did not know if I should contact you. You say you're related to my grandfather? Yes. Heinz was my brother. There is much about the family that you should know, Gabriel. Come to Schloss Ritter in Rittersberg, West Germany. It is our family home. I will tell you everything when you come. You must come immediately. You are in great danger there. Look, I appreciate the family spirit and all, but frankly, I don't know you from Adam, and I'm not going to fly off to Germany, even if I could afford it. Gabriel, please, if you won't listen, at least let me send you something. It is a journal from one of your ancestors. Promise me you will read it. Well, I'm pretty busy. Please, Gabriel, you are the last of our line. I am too old to carry on. You are our last hope. Please, for your family, read the journal. All right, I'll look at it. Good. Now be careful and come to me as soon as you can. Goodbye. 
That was strange. See you later. Good luck. All right, we're gonna go hang out with Grandma for a little bit. See if she knows anything about this Wolfgang Ritter fellow. Gabriel, my love. How nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Gran. Make yourself at home, son. Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? Do you know anyone named Wolfgang Ritter? As I said, your granddad's surname was originally Ritter. I never learned much about his family, but from things he said, I always thought he had a brother back in Germany. I don't know if Wolfgang Ritter is related to your granddad or not. Well, Gran, I better get going. All right, dear. Let's head back to Jackson Square. It's our favorite place to hang out. Besides, we gotta get our pattern here from Homeboy. How's it going today? What? Oh, it's only you. Man, I have been jumpy all day. That that pattern of yours really freaked me out for some reason. It's just something creepy. You finished it? Yeah, and you're welcome to it. Here. Wow, this is great. Uh-huh. Just don't, like, blow up the planet with it or something, okay? I didn't mean to upset you. Oh, forget it. I'm probably just being stupid. Do your thing with it, and good luck. Could I ask you a few questions, Madame Lorelai? The only answers I give are given in my reading. I'm sure your poem would be quite interesting. Come on, boys. Hoopla. at the moment. Punch that bitch. Thanks, boys. That's a nice snake you have there. Mmm, I could say the same of you. Whoa, whoa, mm, whoa! Well, I know where I got mine. Where'd you get yours? <laughs> That's personal. I'd really like to know more about that snake. Sorry, sweetie, but I don't discuss Elvis with anyone. boys hoopla Gabriel doesn't want Gabriel doesn't want to take that out of it. Not a bad idea. Ooh, ooh, baby. Madame Lorelei winks at Gabriel 
and Twitches happy. Yep, she wants me. Out, make sure it doesn't have any bacteria on it. Gabriel examines the veil with a magnifying glass. That sequin looks a little strange. Why, it's a snake scale. This is asshole. Let the assholes come marching. Gabriel examines the I veil with a magnifying glass. You your asshole. When the saints come marching, motherfucker. Gabriel. Carefully uses the tweezers to remove the snake scale from the veil. Gabriel magnifies the scale from the fortune teller. The iridescent scale is hued olive green. It doesn't seem to match the scale from Lake Pontchartrain. Damn it! The iridescent. I think this veil belongs to you. Huh, my veil. I'm always losing those things. You have no idea. Well, darling, you're such a sweetie to return a lady's delicate and so handsome as well. Well, I... And since you have such a clear interest in fortune telling, let me see your hands. They look so strong. Perhaps they will make both our fortunes clear, no? I wish something would. Hmm, strong. Yes, and yet so delicate and uh, flexible. <sighs> you don't know the half of it. Oh, good. I see a mysterious woman in your immediate future. Madame Lorelei winks at Gabriel, knowing it. She is a dangerous one. Dark and beautiful. Ah, I see the road of your life falling. And very soon. <laughs> the blood drains from Madame Lorelei's face in an instant. Sweat beads on her upper lip. Are you okay? No. Oh, oh God. Beware. Beware. What is it about me lately? Hey, hot and trot, baby. Can't help it. Here we are at the cathedral. Resist black. Gabriel doesn't want to take that from the ready room. Nothing on that shelf interests Gabriel. Well, you never know when a priest's collar will come in handy. Damn skip.
that fortune teller go? The other park visitors are enjoying their leisure and aren't interested in talking to Gabriel. Gabriel should get her attention first. You're back. You know, you really freaked me out running off like that. You who? Anybody home? Stay away from Maya Denny, or you shall pay for your life. <gasps> what the hell is going on? Got me, but that shit is nutty. It's at the Tulane University. It looks like the lecture is just starting. Gabriel decides to record the session. Voodoo is the tribal religion of Africa, but the name Voodoo is actually a banner heading under which resides an entire body of distinct tribal belief systems. The word Voodoo may sound familiar to you. What is known in the States as Voodoo is actually an amalgamation of African religious systems, Voodoo, and European religions, primarily Catholicism. All of the subcults of African voodoo have certain things in common. The most important is the worship of a pantheon of spirits instead of the single deity that the Christian and Muslim systems have. Some of these spirits are elementals. Some relate to specific tasks or places. Some represent important tribal leaders who have died. This spirit worship is what makes voodoo so easily adaptable. With all those spirits, it's no problem to add a few more. Say, for example, the Virgin Mary. At the height of tribal Africa, warfare was common. One tribe would conquer another, and the loa, important in the conqueror's tribal system, would be adopted readily into the conquered tribe's loa pantheon. In this way, many of the voodoo cults spread and mingled throughout tribal Africa, enriching the belief system and causing innumerable offshoots. The basis for the voodoo religion seems to be as old as man himself. It has much in common with many early pagan practices. Animal totems, sympathetic magic, elemental spirits in the trees, the heavens, the bodies of the sick. Africa is believed by many to be the cradle of the human race. Some of the voodoo loa may be as old as the Garden of Eden itself. We still can't explain some of the real power of these primal religions. And note, I said primal, not primitive. There are African bokors who baffle our scientists with their supernatural powers. Now, let's discuss the elements of voodoo. <sighs> Fascinating guy. In voodoo, the spirits are called the loa. During a voodoo ceremony, celebrants are possessed by the loa. This is called being ridden. The human worshiper is seen as a horse, and the loa as the divine horseman. A person being ridden by a loa takes on the characteristics of that spirit and becomes, in effect, merely a vessel for the more powerful entity. Some of the older, original Africa loa include Dambala, the great serpent god, his ruling, the mistress of love. Baba Nebo, or Gede, the Lord of Death. Agwe, the spirit of water. Legba, spirit of the crossroads. And the cruelest and most dangerous, 
Bogun Madagri, the Lord of Destruction. Oh, I gotta get more sleep at night. Uh, the tribe-specific Loa can have as much or more power as the more widely worshipped Loa. For instance, a particular tribe might revere highly the Loa of an ancestor who was a legendary hunter or politician. Voodoo temples are called Houndfors. Their priests, Hungun or Bokors. Their priestesses, Mama Loa. In a voodoo hound four, there's a ritual circle marked by a center pole called a poto mitan. The ritual circle is prepared with a bebe, a pattern of symbols. Each tribe's bebe is slightly different, consisting of complex symbols that identify their special law. During ritual conclaves, initiates dance under the supervision of a bokor and a mamaloa, or head priestess. The use of totems or animal masks and markings was not uncommon in the original African ceremonies. Now, though, all but the oldest sects have abandoned this practice. Ritual objects used during the conclaves include the ritual gourd or asson, the ritual knife or kubasa. That knife gives me the chills. The ritual whip. Indiana Jones's whip. Wet gosh. And the ritual coffin or seke madule. These items are often optional, called for by the. Mama Loa for specific magical rituals. The Mama Loa is the most powerful figure in any Voodoo sect. Voodoo is a truly matriarchal system. Even the Bokor knows his power is limited. Mama Loa is the supreme woman. She, butterflies, fireflies. Firelight. <laughs> Gabriel? Mm, what? I can't see. Gabriel, get in. Yeah, it's too small for me. You must get in, Gabriel. It's not mine. Too small. Hide, Gabriel. Hide. No, no. Let me out. Help. Young man. The lecture is over. Oh my god, sorry. Whoops! I did that a few times in college. Every Are you a student? Day. No. My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Well, you have walked into my private office, Mr. Knight. I hope you have something worthwhile to do here. If you figure it out, let me know. I got something really cool to show you. The reconstructed Vebe was done for Gabriel by a technical artist. It's like a goddamn target sign. Can you tell me anything about this pattern? Wow. Interesting. Very interesting. Mind if I copy this? Be my guest. Great. I'll be right back. Here you go. You know, this is a fascinating baby. You must tell me all about its origin. Actually, I was hoping you'd tell me. Can you figure out anything about it from the symbols? Well, some. That's why I wanted to copy. I want to research the design myself. Each of the symbols in the baby represents something. A lower, a place. Where did you get this? Have you heard of the voodoo murders? No, you're kidding. Really? Then the voodoo is authentic. The newspapers are wrong. Boy, are they wrong? You think this veve is authentic then? Authentic? Mr. Knight, that's like asking if the Mona Lisa is a painting. Tell you what, I'll uh, look into these symbols myself and see what I can learn about the sect that made this. 
I'll give you a call when I have more information. Uh, you are associated with the police, aren't you? Absolutely. But I'm, um, uh, undercover. You can contact me at the St. George's Bookshop in the quarter. All right. Now, I'd like to get started on this, if you don't mind. Is there anything you can tell me about the voodoo aspects of this photograph? Hmm, this is serious voodoo ritual. Nasty stuff. In what way? Let's see. I can't make out much detail from this photograph. Except for the corpse, of course. But the wound, the face, and what little I can see of the ritual paraphernalia. Reminded me of certain black voodoo practices. Very rare. I've never witnessed them myself, you understand? Really? Interesting. Thanks. Mind if I pick your brain? Not if it will get you out of my office. Do you have any idea what Cabri Saint Gaulle means? Cabri Saint Cour. Yes, I do. It's a Haitian term, I believe. It's French. And literally translates as goat without horns. As in a female goat? No, as in a human sacrifice. Sacrifices in Vodun are usually of the animal variety. Chickens, wolves, goats. If the gods demand a goat without horns, it means a human being. Interesting. Tell me more about human sacrifice. It's uh, very rare. Most Vodun practices do not include human sacrifice as a matter of record, but it is theoretically possible if that's what the gods demand. For example, one of the chants I had translated for me from a Haitian ritual went like this. Mistress Azuli, come and aid us. If a cart is demanded, what? I will give it. If a bull will suffice, behold it. But if a goat without horns is required for sacrifice, oh where will we find one? Azuli is the gentlest of Loa, so they call on her for mercy. But I have seen grown and powerful Hungan tremble before a possession by one of the more violent Loa, such as Papa Nico. Clearly, they are afraid that something of the sort will be ordered, or that the Loa will simply take it for themselves. All right, folks, that about wraps it up for this video. I'll see you next time with some more Gabriel Knight.